Good morning and welcome to church. My name is Anna and I just want to say thank you so much for joining the online worship experience today. And whether you're joining on YouTube, Facebook, or church online, if you're new with us today, let us know in the chat. We would love to connect with you and know how we can best support you on your faith journey. Well, I just want to wish you guys a very merry, belated Christmas. I'm still donning my Christmas sparkle because I love the holidays. And can you guys believe it? This is our very last worship experience of the year. And as wild as this year has been, we know that there's still hope and that we can find our hope in Jesus. So today during the worship experience, we're actually going to be visiting the pastors in their homes and they're going to be sharing with us some of their favorite highlights of 2020 and also some of the hard times and things that they've had to navigate this year as well. So before we jump into worship, let's pray. God, thank you so much that you are an anchor for our soul. Thank you that we can be grounded in you. Thank you that you have came to save us. Lord, we thank you so much for your unconditional love that covers a multitude. Lord, would you prepare us to receive your word today and prepare our hearts to worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now let's worship. Yeah, you are. 
Worship together.
peace like a river wash over me. Immerse me in water as deep as the sea. Hide me in love, your healing embrace. Peace like a river. Wash over me as I worship. As I worship your majesty, I worship your holy name, Jesus, my everything. All that I am is yours. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit, rain down on me. Break open the heavens and drench the earth sea. Worship to the Lord, the Lord of mercy. And God, we lift our prayers to you, God, that you would bring revival to our cities, our communities, that we would see people's hearts, hearts that are hard, being softened, being melted by your love, by your kindness, by your gentleness, and them turning towards you, Lord, repenting from their sin and saying yes to you, Jesus. This is our prayer. Let's cry it out. Lord, send revival, Lord, send it now, a move of your spirit, heaven break out. Come now with power and cover this 
piece of land like you've done it before. Would you do it again? Come on. Lord, send revival. Lord, send it now. A move of your spirit. and surrender. All that I am is yours. Hey, Experience Church. My name is John, and right now we're going to continue our worship experience by receiving our tithes and offerings. As we get prepared what we're going to be giving this morning, I wanted to remind you about our EXP Legacy Offering that we have going on right now and into the new year. Our EXP Legacy Offering is a time for us to step forward and out in faith and go above and beyond our normal giving and give God our best at the end of the year. With this EXP Legacy Offering in 2020, we're planning to continue to build out the church online worship experience to make it fresh and engaging. We're also going to be continuing renovations on our GV ministry space and locating and moving into a new San Francisco ministry space that we can use on Sundays for in-person services in the future. In order to accomplish all this, our goal with this year's legacy offering is to reach $120,000 in donations. We have some great news, we're already halfway there. We actually have some really generous members on our EXP Legacy team that have pledged $60,000 that is going to be used to match, dollar for dollar, the amount that you're giving this morning. This means that the impact of your giving is doubled. And we've made it easy to give. We've act, we're actually set up to receive your offerings in a variety of ways, from stock to cryptocurrency to corporate matching. We're also set up to receive tithes and offerings online. If you look at the sides of the screen, you can see the many different ways that you can give this morning. Church, we're so excited for the future that God has for us in 2021, and we're really looking forward to see, seeing how God provides for us with this legacy offering. We encourage you to prayerfully consider what God is putting on your heart to give towards this legacy offering this morning. Can you join me as we pray over our offering this morning? Lord, we come before you now, Father. We thank you so much, Lord. God, that for the blessings that you've given us, Father. God, as we step forward in faith right now, as we give our best with this year's legacy offering, Father. Lord, we pray that you bless it, that you'd multiply it, Father God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we have the opportunity, Father, to step into the calling of the good stewardship, Lord, that you have on our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. 
Church, thank you so much for joining me as we receive our tithes and offerings this morning. Right now, we're going to continue our worship experience by hearing a message from all of our church pastors. Please join us. Good morning, and welcome to our Experience Church family for our very last worship experience of 2020. Wow. Hello to all of our guests. So many of you have found us here in 2020, and we look forward to hopefully worshiping with you in person sometime in the new year. And here's what we want to do today. You're going to hear from a group of our pastors here at Experience. And what we want to do is we want to lead you in a time of reflection from the scriptures. And, and this is why reflection is so important. Reflection brings revelation. That's when like the light bulb goes off. And I know this time of year we want to run to next year and start planning out our resolutions and, and all that type of stuff. But it's so important to actually pause and reflect and look back because in doing that and evaluating our experiences, this is how we learn and this is how we grow. And there's a scripture for this. Uh, we've got our notebooks and Bibles ready to go uh, in our time of reflection. It's Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And it says this, that all things work together for good. Now, I know in 2020, we're like, really? I don't know about that. But it's true. It's a promise that, that God invites us to receive and to stand on and believe for. And it says that all things work together for our good, those that love God and are called according to his purpose, that we may be conformed to the image of his son. Which means that God can use a pandemic, an election year, all the stuff going on in the world to actually change us and grow us to become more like Jesus, to have more joy, to give more hope, to serve and to sacrifice with a smile, to have courage and boldness and strength and peace in the midst of so much adversity. This is what happens and what we receive as we are able to reflect. That's right, and, and in order to move forward, it is good first to look back and remember and reflect, as you said. And I love this verse in Psalm 77, verse 11 by David, and he says, I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your works of old. And it says, I will ponder. I love that word ponder, just meditate and think on. Good word. All of your works and meditate on your mighty deeds. Mm, that word ponder, it's that pause, it's that Selah moment where we think and wonder and, and try to draw learning and growth from that experience. Thoughtful, spirit-led reflection always prepares us for what God has in store, for what's next for us. We receive that by pondering and reflecting. And so in doing that, uh, one of the gifts that we've received this year as a family, so many family dinners together, right, in our home, and we would have family dinner and we talk about our highlight of the day, our challenge of the day, and then a gift that we received that day from God in some way. And so what we wanna do is we wanna start by inviting you into that reflection framework this morning. And we're gonna start with the pain, mm. the challenges of this year. And it goes back to March. We started the year so well with these beautiful worship experiences with worship and hospitality and coffee and food and kids church and communion and all these in-person wonderful things that we love. And we moved to church online. And I will be honest with you, it was painful, especially when you're the one filming on your own iPhone. Yeah, <laughs> and everything's wobbling, and dogs are barking, and, and kids are yelling, and we're right. like, quiet on the set! That's right, toilets flushing, and stands falling over. And, and we thought it was only going to be just a few weeks, three weeks or so, and we'd be back together. No. Not so much. It just kept on going, going, going. But we've also seen God use it to reach a bunch of people as well. That's right. And speaking of people... Another really hard thing is we've had to say goodbye to some families and to some people this year. I know with people losing jobs and getting new jobs and relocating or having some personal changes, um, we've had to have some very deep but meaningful conversations, yet it doesn't make it any easier. And we, we, still, yeah, miss we still miss people and um, it's not the same. So That's right. And maybe you, maybe you too have had to say goodbye to some people. And, um, it's never an easy thing to navigate, but it's tough. Yeah, it's, tough. it's life. Uh, how about George Floyd walking with people mm. through racial trauma? Uh, very real. And I think both That's of us hard. felt such a sense of we're not doing enough. And it's so hard in a time of social distance to be the shoulder to cry on when you can't be in the same room with people and lots of Zoom calls and text messages but it just didn't feel like it was enough. It didn't suffice. 
in order to bridge the gap with people that you want to comfort and love and touch and put your arm around. So challenging. Yes, and how about leading a beautiful, diverse church family through literally a polarizing political season, as you said earlier. Can we just say, I'm glad it's over? <laughs> I'm glad it's over, we're moving forward, and uh, yeah, that was not easy. Uh, on a personal note, uh, our kids, moving three kids to at-home learning. Amanda is like teacher of the year in my book. She's Insane. been exceptional. I yeah, empathize with all you parents out there. It's yeah. been rough. And all three of our kids have, have been absolute champions. They've been incredible. We're so thankful for that. Uh, me, not so much. Uh, I've struggled pretty badly with cabin fever and not enough space and I took up running. I ran 500 miles this year because I needed space to breathe. And I know that can sound very insensitive to some that are watching this morning where it may be the opposite for you, where you feel lonely and maybe you're single or living alone and it's been extremely challenging. I think both of us on totally different spectrums have felt the pain and the loss and the change of this year. We kind of joked early on that the, the extroverts were struggling, the introverts were thriving in quarantine, but yeah. we've all needed a lot of grace. And I think that that is what we've looked back on what God has done in us and through us uh, one of the biggest things we've come to realize is that we are not in control. Um, none of us have been this year, and which actually has caused us to become even more dependent on God mm. and recognizing that we do all have limitations. Yes. We do need to give ourselves that grace. Yes. Um, but more than ever, we've had to cling to God and surrender our wills and just yes. trust Him. Lots of trust. I used to lament my limitations. Now I think I'm learning to embrace my limitations. I'd also say that uh, we have grown more like this and our church family is more growing. Uh, sensitivity, becoming more sensitive to God, but also to others mm -hmm. and to the, the pain that they may be experiencing, a growing compassion and, and empathy. And I don't, I don't think we're there yet where we're actually feeling what others are feeling, but I think we're becoming increasingly aware of what people could be feeling and we want to grow to someday to fulfill that scripture that we actually weep with those yeah. that weep and we rejoice with those that rejoice. Mm -hmm. We've seen a great strength be deposited into many of you and us and really feel like we've, we've strengthened our spiritual muscles this year and I've seen so many of you thriving and growing spiritually and just becoming more resilient. And we've kind of talked about that, that, that pressurized uh, just like the, the beauty of a pearl, that pressure causes us to become refined. And, you know, we found we're even more determined now to fight for Amen. and contend for, to see revival happen in the Bay Area, to see heaven come to your earth and That's right. God's kingdom be manifested. In our day, it's yes. going to happen. We're believing for it. And our highlights of this year. How about Pray the Bay? I mean, that has been exceptional. So Where would I be? Where would you be without Pray the Bay, the consistency of prayer and faithfulness and hunger and the presence of God and so many answered prayers? I want to say thank you to every one of you that have logged on, that have prayed, yes. that have led us in worship, that have commented in the chat, anything that you've done to contribute to prayer. We said on Vision Sunday this year that right. we would become a praying church and we have come so far in such a short amount of time. Such a highlight. And so many answered prayers. Tons. I mean, so many to can't even document. God has been working. And I also want to give a huge shout out to everyone who's joined us and dozens of you had read the Bible in a year with yeah. us. And it's hard to believe this year's almost finished. We've almost completed the whole Bible in a year and seen so much growth. And honestly, uh, our, our early morning Zoom call with the people reading the Bible in a year and sharing what God's showing them in the Word and where God has been highlighted to them, it's, it's usually one of the best parts of my day. <laughs> and I, I love you guys. And, and we're going to kick off again come January, a new Bible reading plan. It's and great. it's going to continue on. So That's right. good. On a personal note, our family has gotten so much closer together. And we see like a, a real tangible grace coming on our kids. And we're so mm -hmm. thankful for that. They've actually been working on writing their first worship song. I think it must be in the water and experience. It's contagious. They're begging for an EXP youth worship team. That's right. Yes, Max took up that. guitar lessons. Jack Jones is learning the drums. And Maddie got a keyboard for Christmas. And she'll be starting lessons in the new year. We may have 
the McGovern Family Band very soon coming your way. These are some of our highlights, which we are so thankful for. And I think it's so important that we say thank you to where thank you is due, and there's so much. And so I wanna recognize some very important people, our staff. You all have been exceptional this year. You have been agile, you have been flexible, and you have certainly been faithful. Our three new additions this year, Anna, also known affectionately as A the Dre. She has helped us stay organized and communicate well. Thank you so much, Anna. John has been exceptional in developing our generosity teams, our legacy offering, and, and getting us financially situated in very crazy times. Uh, as well as Ty has been such a strength in our team leading Pray the Bay. And then we have Austin, who I don't know how you do it, but you're leading a building thing happening in our location in Green Valley and Church Online. Joy, who has led so well. Our worship online, guys, so good. is so good. We get amped for it every Many single Sundays, week. Many Sundays, I watch it over and over and over. I'm Multiple repeat. times. So good. Yeah. That's right. So good. Thank you, Joy, for your leadership. And Krista has been incredible in developing a care team that calls and texts and reaches out to our people so that they feel cared for and looked after and seen and heard. Thank you guys so much for all that you've contributed this year. And like we've talked about mentioning prayer, I want to give a shout out and thank you to all of you who've helped lead Pray the Bay and the yes. team, hosting, leading prayer, leading worship, George, Ty, Liz, Brandy, hope I'm not forgetting someone, many it. of you, many yeah. of you. Been yeah. absolutely Faithful, incredible. so faithful, so committed. That's right. Helping others grow in prayer. It's been beautiful. Thank you so much for all that you have invested this year. Thank you so much, Pastors Mark and Amanda. Uh, you know, before we jump into what 2020 has been for us, I just want to take a quick second. We just want to take a quick second and say thank you to the both of you for everything that you've done with us this year. Yeah, 2020, there's no handbook for uh, how to navigate COVID and pandemics and all this stuff. And so we just thank you guys uh, for all of your leadership during this difficult times. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think probably for us, um, you know, you're going to hear this over and over again. It was not what we thought. And for us personally as a family, just watching the girls navigate, well, all three of us navigate school um, from a Zoom link has been extremely difficult. Uh, watching Rain do her junior year from her bedroom, not be able to interact with friends. Um, that's been really hard. And then Sky being 20, you know, you want to get in your car, go see friends, go, you know, just grow up and live your life. And so watching her navigate that as well has been kind of difficult. Uh, for me personally, I have kind of just lived my life. Um, yeah, I never went to college. And so that's just been a big insecurity of mine. When I was, you know, when I was in school, I didn't do well. And so I just kind of figured, oh, college will never be my thing. And so over the past few years, God's just been dealing with me on this. You know, I'd be in a room and was afraid to have a conversation with different people because maybe I wasn't smart enough or I couldn't hold my own. And so as I have grown in God and he's begun to just build a confidence in me, I decided, yes, I want to go back to school. And then all of a sudden, bam, a <laughs> pandemic hit. And so now, you know, I, I did my first semester of school. Uh, it was actually really awesome, which I never thought I'd say. And that was hard because I didn't have the teachers, you know, the, the interaction with um, teachers and being able to ask questions or be around other students. And so that one, was... one of her classes was entirely uh, self-taught, no uh, instruction at all. So uh, even having to learn to do that was pretty uh, difficult. Yeah, so I'm excited. I get to start again uh, with new classes in January and I know that God has just done something really big in all that. And then uh, definitely for us as pastors, watching people go through different difficult circumstances and you just yeah. wanna be able to give people, people a hug or like at least have some personal connection, yeah. uh, be there with them. And doing a lot of that this year, pastoring from a distance has been pretty difficult just to, just for the church in general, just yeah. trying to figure out ways to really connect with people emotionally without being able to be there with them. Uh, it's been pretty difficult. Uh, and uh, lastly, just our care pastors, uh, we started this nine month uh, journey of pre intensive uh, discussions and training um, back in March. And we had our very first meeting right before COVID. And then we never got to meet again. It's all been Zoom ever yep. since. Um, and it's that was pretty difficult too. We had all these grand plans that didn't happen. Uh, however, 
you know, seeing God work in all that has been pretty amazing too. There's been a lot of great things about 2020. And one of them was just seeing the care pastors grow, even despite all the crazy uh, Zoom calls yeah. and not having that same physical connection and, um, and being in our in presence together. And so it's pretty incredible what God has done there. And we had some really amazing times and really God just put his hand all over that entire uh, experience and all those training classes were, were so much fun. So that was pretty cool. And then also... Um, the community yeah. groups. We've just watched so many groups start, especially our middle schoolers. Not only are they having so much fun on Zoom with games and different things, but then they're behind the scenes running cameras, uh, helping with prayer, you know, before the church service. So it's been very cool to watch people grow. I mean, God knew. God knew there'd be a pandemic. God knew we'd be on Zoom, and yet we all continue to grow. Um, so that's been very cool. And I think my favorite thing uh, about um, what God has done for us in all this it's just been the fact that I usually work, uh, you know, a good 10 hour days and travel quite a bit during the year. Mm -hmm. So I haven't had to travel at all since March and I've got to spend all this extra time with the family. I've been around more than I've been around in my girls entire lives. And so it's been pretty neat and uh, been very special to me to be able to spend that extra time with them, uh, particularly as they're growing up and getting ready to leave the house. So. I'll, uh, I'll always treasure that extra time we got. Yeah, and then we just want to say thank you to a handful of you. Um, we've done calls, texts, ca uh, care cards, and we've had a group of people that have helped us care for Experience Church. And so I just want to read off a list of names to you to say thank you personally to Daniel, Melissa, Chad, Brandy, Luzeal, Alfred, Colette, John, Ty, Anna, um, all of our pastoral team, Mark and Amanda, Kim, Joy, Austin and Mercy, and PM and Pastor Gail. Um, we could not have done any of all, uh, or all of that without you, and so we just want to say thank you. And a big thanks to all of our care pastors uh, for nine months of work and effort. Yeah. Um, you guys were amazing this year. Ty and Bruno, Frank and Gio, Mike and Ines, Jen and Ryan, and John and Luth. Thank you guys so much. And then personally for Chris and I, just a huge thank you to Les and Faye. Um, Les, yeah. emails and text messages constantly following up to us with us was just um it was really touching and special for us and it felt we felt very uh, supported and uh, yeah. and loved by you guys so just thank you for that yeah so from the kramer household to yours we just want to say happy new year take it away largusas thank you caitlin and krista uh, for sharing how your year went i think our year was fairly similar in that it wasn't ideal and it was different uh territory to charter um i think one of the hardest things for me was uh, watching our church uh, walk through all the things we went through this year, uh, mm -hmm. but not having the face-to-face -face relational uh, community that we usually have. Mm -hmm. Like, I think last year I found so much strength every Sunday knowing that I was going to be able to see my church family. And no matter what I went through on Sunday, I was going to be able to see my church family. But this year, the things we've had to walk through and not being able to see anyone and not being able to have these heart to hearts and mm -hmm. hear and hug, them. and hug them and really hear like the pain and the hurt and the confusion that people are going through and and uh seeing conversations uh online on social media uh be misinterpreted based on how they're read uh, that was that was difficult for me mm -hmm. yeah i think just to piggyback on that um, like I mentioned earlier, hugging people, not being able to hug people through this really trying year was really hard for me. Um, and I just, I think as a pastor, I think I felt a lot of pressure because I didn't have all the answers as to why things happen the way they happen this year. And, um, so that was really difficult. And, um, I think just recently with holidays and not being able to see family. My niece was born earlier this year and only getting to see her once in person was really hard. Um, and I think um, at, the, at the beginning, mine was um, struggling with the pressure of, of having to do something significant. I think everyone was, Oh, it seemed like a lot of people were starting all these great small businesses and I'm at home like a bunch like a bunch of us just at home it's like oh well should I start something right, too what do I do? <laughs> um so yeah. yeah and of course uh what's with what's up with the, like the uh 
the TP shortage. Yeah, that was a struggle. Was we couldn't struggle. find it anywhere. You guys bought it all out <laughs> the moment everything crazy happened. Uh, but I mean, it, we had some good times this year too. Yeah. Um, I think the highlight of the year for me was how much time we got to spend together as a family. Uh, I love being a husband, I love being a dad, and I love getting to just spend time with my family. Uh, we did every, pretty much every Friday this year. Yes. The kids call it Family Fun Friday. Also uh, our Sabbath. It's, it's also our Sabbath. Sabbath. <laughs> uh, but it, it's so fun to see them have fun and, and this be a thing that we do in creating new family traditions. And so that's probably the highlight of the year for me. Mm -hmm. um, I have a few highlights. I think in the beginning of quarantine, um, along with like the that TP shortage, there's actually a shortage of um, fun activities for the kids to do outside, like chalk. Um, and at the beginning, our good friend, yeah. our great friend, <laughs> Megan Mueller Thaler, yes. she was dynamite. She would she dropped off um, little packages, like care packages. Um, she thought she was sneaky, but we have the ring doorbell, so... We saw her. <laughs> we saw you. <laughs> um, but that was a highlight, uh, yeah. just to know that someone is thinking of us. And, um, I mean, I love gifts, so... Yeah. Especially surprise gifts. And then in March, can you believe it's been since March, we got a brand new building in Green building. Valley. Yes. Come on. Uh, super excited. Home. Yeah. I loved, um, I think especially our first midweek, even though we met outside, um, it was it was just so special just to be at home um, with our family, even though, even though it was in our backyard. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was really special. Yeah, and then uh, after our first Sunday worship experience that we had, um, going out to eat with people was incredible. I don't even think I finished my food because I just wanted to talk to everyone and get caught up on how they were doing. And so uh, as difficult and trying as this year has been, uh, we've found such great highlights and such great memories that we've made. And so we actually want to cap off this video by just sending out some thank yous uh, to people on the team and really just thinking about our team up here uh, in GV, the directors, everyone who made stuff happen. I'm just going to throw some names out. Um, mm -hmm. The Kramers, Chad and Brandy. Uh, Daniel. The, Daniel. Melissa. The, the Big Aruses. The George Little Aruses. Mike and Ines. That's <laughs> and right. Christelle. Not Christelle. Christelle. <laughs> <laughs> the Kurtz. Kurtz. Uh, Nate and Kayla. Yes. You guys were incredible. Everyone, I'm missing a bunch of names, but everyone up here in GB, thank you guys so much. Uh, church just kept rolling because of you guys. And we so appreciate everything you've committed uh, to God and everything you've committed to the house. Yeah. And so thank you again. Uh, on you to 2021. It's going to be our best year yet. Uh, we're going to pass it over to Joy and Kim. Good morning, Experience Church family. What can we say about 2020? What a year. It didn't go at all like we had expected. Definitely not how we expected. It was a year ago that we um, were actually moving into the city. Mm -hmm. We decided to take a leap of faith on January, what was it, January 3rd? January 3rd. And move from mm -hmm. East Bay into the city. Um, we were hoping for so many things to happen. It didn't quite happen. We mm -hmm. wanted to move here so our kids didn't have to commute to school and could be closer to work opportunities. We were really hoping to open the Masona, the co-working and ministry center. And we really, at the heart of it, wanted to move to the city to be closer to you, to mm -hmm. our family here in San Francisco. We love having people over to the house mm -hmm. and we were so looking forward to um, almost every weekend, just getting together and building community. But a couple months in, that didn't really <laughs> happen, did it? <laughs> Two and a half months to be exact, can you believe that? And we went from being with everyone or like working closer to everyone on staff to working remotely full time, uh, to being isolated and not meeting every Sunday. I think it's the first time in almost 30 years of ministry where I've missed so many consecutive Sundays going to church. I mean, unbelievable. So it has not been at all what we expected. And, you know, I actually hit a couple really low points, like probably one in mm -hmm. um, April and then again in the month of June. I just... I just became so emotionally drained 
really frustrated and, and, and really angry at God, to be honest with you. And um, I was just in a dark place. There were days I didn't want to get out of bed, uh, days I couldn't, if I ever made it out of bed, even make the bed, maybe take a shower. Yeah, Kim didn't <laughs> like those days. Yeah, was weren't the best days. Um, but it was never one thing that got me into it, and it really wasn't more than wasn't just one thing that got me out of it. Uh, back to reality again. It was it was really a few things. One of them being pray the bay. I was so thankful that um, every day I could have a chance to know other people, other people in our family were going to pray. That we had a chance to lay our burdens at the feet of Jesus. That we could mm -hmm. see each other's faces, hear each other's voices, and and really experience God's presence, even on a Zoom call. <laughs> But that was really part of it. You know, the other thing that kind of brought me out of it was really taking my eyes off myself and finding a way to serve others and really trying to figure out, even though we pivoted three or four or five different ways of how to do church online, mm -hmm. how to videotape it, how to, how to film it and how to uh, present ourselves online, it actually eventually became a way that I found purpose outside of just being depressed and emotional and Really, I need to thank so many people as part of the worship mm -hmm. team and production team uh, for coming alongside me and giving me so much more passion again, giving me the excitement to serve. And I'm really going to, I'm going to read their names right now. I've actually made a list. I'm sure I'm going to forget someone, but I wanted to see how many names I could get down. So let me just start with the worship team with Tom, Chris, Alec, Ryan, Ty, George, Brandy, Megan, Bella, Jasmine, and Julian. And, and even Jasmine and Julian were on the production team as well. And that included Will and Eric and Tony and Baltazar, Frank, Miguel, Kayla, Nate, Chad, uh, Jackie, David, Sky, Rain, and even Max. So many people <laughs> have been a part of what uh, we've been doing with Shirts Online. And it not only helped me get out of um, my emotional downs, but really... Uh, focused my mind again and my efforts on serving others. And I hope that you as an EXP family have enjoyed those church online experiences. Yes, and we're so grateful for a few other things. Um, one of the things we're so grateful for is our sons have been able to find um, work all year mm -hmm. long, working essential jobs. It's been a huge blessing to mm -hmm. our family. Yeah. And we are incredibly excited about the continued work that's happened during this whole time with our songwriting and our mm -hmm. worship team. Yeah. Uh, they've been working so hard on getting ready for this EP to come out um, in March, right? Mm -hmm. it's that's going to be coming out very soon. You've probably already listened to the first song that's been released. And then it's been so fun to um, have the small get togethers that we've been able to do, picnics in Golden Gate Park. We've just really enjoyed Mm -hmm. that opportunity to go for walks with people um, and see them face to face. So although 2020 didn't end up being the year that we thought it was going to be, um, there are still so many blessings, some beautiful mm -hmm. things. Even out of difficult times, we were able to accomplish much as a church family. So thank you for everyone that's been involved this season. And from our family to yours, we want to wish you a very happy new year. Thank you so much to our pastors for their insights and reflections on this year. Now we want to pray this beautiful scripture in Romans over you. This is becoming a theme verse in our church. We're declaring that there is hope. That's right. Now may God, the inspiration and the fountain of hope, fill you Amen. to overflow with uncontainable joy and perfect peace as you trust in him. And may the power of the Holy Spirit continually surround your life with his super abundance until you radiate with hope. Amen. Amen. You're going to radiate with hope in 2021. We believe it. Next week, we are going to be doing a message on dreams. And we're going to be talking about your dreams and, and God's dreams for you. And, and we're going to learn that disappointments are actually necessary in order for a dream to come to pass. And we'll learn next week whether what we're thinking is a dream is actually a delusion or if it's actually God's dream. It's gonna be great. I think it's gonna be a great Sunday to kick off the year. We're gonna be praying over your dreams. We believe that God's gonna do something for you. He has so much for you. There's so much hope ahead for us. Right. God bless.